Retool is a fast way to build internal tools on top of your databases and APIs. Think admin panels, dashboards, workflows, really anything that needs a UI. With Retool, you can build a fully featured admin panel in just a few minutes. And to prove that claim, we're going to do that right now. We're going to build this admin panel on top of Postgres, but in Retool, it's really just as easy to do with any data source, Mongo, GraphQL, Firebase, pretty much anything that can hold data. And here's the app we're going to build. It's a fully functional CRUD admin panel. We're reading users from a user's table in our database. We can edit these users in the table by clicking on them. We can delete any of these users by clicking the button next to their name. And there's a form on the right for adding a new user. Building and retool, we're using this ID. And the ID is four main sections that I want to talk about. Section number one is the canvas. And the canvas is where we drag and drop our components. It's the base for the UI of your app. You can think of it just like a page of HTML. On the right, we've got our inspector panel, and this is where you work with components. You can drag new components onto the canvas and also edit settings or props of your existing components. Number three on the bottom is our query editor, and the query editor is where you get data in and out of your Retool app by writing queries. You can write queries against databases or APIs, but you can also run arbitrary JavaScript with debouncing and triggers, etc. Finally, on the left, we've got our model browser. And the model browser is where you can see all the data available in your Retool app, Queries, components, other pieces of your app have properties that you can work with programmatically, and the model browser shows you them in these nice structured trees. For ease of development, you can toggle any of these panels on or off, either using the UI up here, or Command-B for the left panel, Command-J for the bottom panel, and Command-U for the right panel. So let's get started. To build this not-so-fancy admin panel and retool, we're generally going to follow the pattern of first dragging components onto the canvas, and then worrying about the data flow for those components. And we're gonna follow the CRUD acronym, but a little bit out of order. We're gonna do RUDC or read, update, delete, and then create. So let's get started with reading. We have a bunch of users data in our database and we wanna get it into our app. So we'll start by dragging a table component onto the canvas. And in Retool, the table component is really the workhorse of internal tools or internal tools in general, that's true. And Retool's table component gives you a lot of really convenient CRUD functionality out of the box. You can see that it populates with some hard-coded data. We'll get rid of that in just a moment. The first thing to do is rename this users table. And the reason for that is that all components in Retool are referenceable in JavaScript. And so as such, we want to make sure that we follow best practices for variable naming. So let's get some of our own data into this table. And to do that, I'm going to click New, and I'm going to click on Resource Query. A resource in Retool is any third-party data source, so a database or API. But you can also run JavaScript queries, you can build transformers, and you can even fire analytics events. For my resource dropdown, I'm going to pick onboarding DB, which is a Postgres database that I've already connected to Retool. But you can connect your own database and API in just a few minutes. For SQL resources, we've got two options for querying. We've got SQL mode, which is just a raw SQL editor like you'd expect in any IDE. But we've also got a GUI mode for writes, which we're going to touch on later. Now, I have a bunch of sample user data in a table called Retool Demo Users. So we'll just do a simple select star from Retool Demo Users. And I'm going to order those users by their ID. Clicking Preview runs that query and shows us the data, which indeed does look like some users. And clicking Save and Run will populate that data into the app's data model. So let's call this query something nicer, Get Users. And then to get it into our table, I'm going to click on the table, head to the right, your inspector get rid of the hard-coded data and the data property. And then I'm going to write two curly braces, which is how you write JavaScript in Retool. And we'll reference the dot data property of our get users query. Get users dot data. And just like that, we've got real data in our table component. There's a lot of stuff you can do in the Retool table without writing code. So for example, we can get rid of the ID column because our users don't need to see the primary key. And we can also make these columns a little bit nicer. So let's call this email with a capital E. This will be first name, this will be last name, and then we'll do a capital A for approved. And now we have an app that reads data from our database. Next, updates. The Retool table lets you update data inside that table really easily. And there's two things we need to do to make that happen. Number one, a front end change, which is making these columns editable. And number two is a back end change, which is passing through the actual query that's going to do that updating. So to make the front end editable, we'll just click on the table, head over to the columns section of the table settings, and click on this editable checkbox. And now when we click in on any of these columns, you can see that the value is actually editable on the front end. Now to make this work in the back end, we're going to create a new resource query, same settings as before, but we're going to pick GUI mode this time. 
And Retool's GUI mode just makes it easy to do writes to your database without having to worry about accidentally dropping tables or deleting data. From the table dropdown, I'm going to pick Retool Demo Users, which is our users table. For the action type, we'll do update an existing record. And there's two pieces of data we need to pass in. Number one is a filter, so Retool knows which row to actually update. And number two is the change set that we want to pass through. For the filter, we want to pass through the primary key of the selected row of the table. And Retool's table has a dot selected row property, which makes this really easy. So in here, we'll put two curly braces for JavaScript. We'll reference our users table. We'll do dot selected row dot data dot ID, which evaluates to one since we have the first row selected. Now, if I click on the second row, you can see that evaluates to two and so on and so forth. Now for the change set, there's two ways of doing this. We could do a column by column key value pair, or we can pass through an object and Retool's table exposes a property called record updates. So we'll do users table dot record updates. And record updates is an array of every row that's had any change in the table. And each item in the array is an object. So let's say we want to change this to Skywalk. If I click on record updates, you can see now it has one object in the array which is the entire row that we've changed to put Skywalk in. But let's index this at zero just for simplicity's sake, since we'll only be updating one row. And then finally for this query, we're going to add a success handler that triggers the get users query on success so that there's always fresh data in the table once we've updated it. Let's update the query name to update user. And then finally, let's get rid of these changes first. We'll click on our table, head over to the interaction section, which is where you add event handlers, and we'll add an event handler that on save changes, which is that button you just saw, triggers the update user query. Looks like Retool's defaults were correct here. And so now if I want to change Luke's name to Luke Skywalk, if I click save changes, that'll trigger that update user query, which in turn triggers the get users query, and we have some updated data. Let's just change it back for posterity's sake. And just like that, We've got a table that reads, and we've got a table that updates. Third, delete. So I'll start here with the query, a little backwards. Same settings as before. I'll pick GUI mode, our reasonable demo users table, and then for the action type, we'll do delete a record. All we need to do here is pass through the filter, and we're going to use the same filter as the update user query, which is the users tables, selected rows, primary key, or ID. Again, I'm going to add an event handler that on success triggers a read query. I'll click save and we'll update this to delete user. Now for the front end, Retool's table allows you to add action buttons for each row. So I'll click on the table, head over to the inspector and scroll to the actions section. I'm going to add a new one. Let's call this column delete user. And then for the button, let's call it something a little bit nicer, like, well, the trash can emoji. We want the action button to run a query and the query we want it to run is our delete user query. Aesthetically, I like to move the action buttons to the right side of my table and also freeze them so we get this nice little divider over here. And that should work. So if we want to delete Mace Windu from our database, if I click this delete button, he should be gone. And indeed, he's no longer here. So we've got read, we've got update, and we've got delete. Last thing we want to add to our table is create functionality. There are a couple of different ways to create new rows in your database in Retool. You can do it straight in the table component, but I want to showcase Retool's form functionality. In Retool, a form is just basically a container with inputs that let you validate those inputs when you submit. So I'll start by dragging a form component onto the canvas. The form component by default has a dynamic height, but I like mine to have a fixed height. So I'm going to change that setting and then just drag this down to make it the same height. Our schema is really simple. We've got an email, we've got a first name, we've got a last name, and we've got a Boolean value for approved. I can generate these automatically in Retool's form generator, but just for simplicity's sake, I'll drag them up. Cool. So we'll do a text input for first and last name. Let's expand this to fill the form, update the label to first name, and I'll also mark this as required in the validation section so our users have to fill it out. I'll do Command C and Command V to add a second one. And we'll update the label here to last name for email. Let's use an email input. I'll expand this to fill the form as well. We want to mark this as required too. And finally, for the approved value, we'll use a checkbox component. We'll expand this to fit the form. I like my labels for the checkbox component to be on the left. And let's update this to approved. Now for this checkbox, we could mark it as required, but what that would do is require our users to have a value of true. 
And we want our users to be able to pass a value of false as well. So we'll leave it the way it is. The last thing to do with these components is we're going to rename them to names that match the schema of the database. And the reason we'll do that is it's going to make it really easy to get data from this form into the database. So we'll call this approved. Let's also change the name of this form to something a little bit nicer, add user form, and then we can make these titles a bit more descriptive, add new user, and then for the button as well, let's call this add user. So now we've got our UI laid out. Let's create a query that actually takes the data from this UI and puts it into our database. So we'll create a new resource query. We'll pick GUI mode, use our onboarding DB. Again, retool demo users table. For the action type, we're going to pick insert a record. And we just need to pass through a change set. We're going to choose object again. And retools form components expose this convenient data property, which just is an object of all the data in the form. So we'll do add user form dot data. And right now you can see it's empty, but this will just be really convenient to pass through the database. So if I want to add Mace Windu back in, I just type his name here, do mace at retool.com. And when I take a look at this property, it now has all of the data from our form. And since we named these form inputs the same things as they're called in the database, we don't have to make any further updates. Although in Retool, you can add keys to change them in flight. So I'll click save. Let's also add an event handler on success again to trigger that get users query so the data in our table is fresh. And I'll call this add user. Last thing we need to do is just hook this up to our form. So I'll click on the form, scroll to the interaction section in the inspector and add an event handler. Retools defaults all seem to be right here on submit. We want to trigger a query and that query is add user. So cool. If I click add user, it looks like Mace got added to the database and there he is. So just like that, we've got a fully functional CRUD admin panel in Retool that lets you read users from a table in the database edit their data, delete them, and even add a new one. So this demo app that we built is built on top of Postgres, but in Retool, it's incredibly easy to do this with whatever data store your team uses. So for example, here's the exact same app, but using GraphQL. And again, here's the same app, but using MongoDB. The only thing that has to change is the queries powering your app and maybe a bit of nested object parsing if you're using GraphQL. Similarly, the app that we've built here is really simple, but in Retool, you can build pretty much arbitrarily complex apps. Here's a similar app to the one we've built, but using a lot more of Retool's really stellar components. You can create detailed forms with all different types of inputs. You can create lists of repeatable components. You can create charts, pretty much anything that you can build in React, you can build in Retool a lot easier. And all of these components come standard on every Retool plan, including the free tier. And along the same lines, you can actually style Retool apps to match or we'd like them to look. Here's a Star Wars theme on theme, albeit not the prettiest work I've done. And we also could do a little bit more of a corporate conscious theme with just some colored borders and buttons. You can create themes that apply across all your retool apps so that everything was the same. And you can even write custom CSS for styling that we don't support natively. Back to this complex app over here, retool is built by technical folks for other technical folks. And what that means is that anything you can build in react, you can build in retool and it's going to be easier. For example, Retool supports maintaining multiple environments, staging and production for your apps. You can add documentation to your apps, explaining what they do and how to use them for whoever you built them for. Retool apps can be restricted to Git workflows. So mission critical tools always look the way that you expect them to. You can create reusable groups of components that you can use across apps with Retool's modules feature. Retool also supports building custom React components and defining an interface slash data model for those components. The list goes on. The basic idea is that Retool is made for building production grade, mission critical internal apps, and that's exactly what our customers use it for. And this demo is just a small piece of what you can do in Retool. Some of the world's largest companies, but also smallest startups use Retool for their internal tools with use cases ranging from simple admin panels, just like this one, to complex map box setups and forms with hundreds of inputs. If you can build it in React, you can build it in Retool a lot easier. Thank <laughs> you.